Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 104 where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net that's m-s-a-r-g-e-n-t 23 at comcast.net and I will do my best to answer them so let's get right to it this one's called Flat Earth Convention Carolinas Hey, Mark, can you tell me the address and times for the Flat Earth Convention in the Carolinas, like dates, etc., to cost? I'm a new Flat Earth and I really want to get uh, to a convention, so I've got to have info to plan ahead. Love your videos. Uh, the Ice Wall email from the eyewitness. Thank you. Blah, blah, blah. That's from Ollie Johnson. And yeah, whatever's going to happen in the Carolinas is going to happen in the spring. And I don't know much more than that uh, so far. I, I just know that I'm going to be there and I don't know who else is going to be there, but I, I, I'm going to be showing and speaking at it with other people. I just don't know who they are. It, I, it's, it's really early in the stages, but I know they're serious about it. So this one's called Whidbey Island. Any meetups? Hey, Mark. Are there flat earthers on Whidbey Island that you know of besides you and me? Please let me know if there's a gathering. I'm a senior and stay local. Plan to place this FE tract on local bulletin boards. I found the picture of the boy on the internet. It's not my photo, but don't know about copyright law. Do you know if I can use it? And that's from Dana. And let me look at the pic real quick. And yeah, if you find a, a picture on the internet, chances are you can use it. I mean, I've used literally thousands of slides and only once did I ever get any pushback. And that was from a guy in Colorado. He was an anti-flat earther. And he claimed that his, his thumb, that I, a photo that he used for a thumbnail of mine on YouTube was one of his. And I just pushed back and said, uh, yeah, fair use. Come get me. And he backed down. So I'm pretty sure he didn't own that, uh, that thing. And the rule of thumb is, is this, which is if you put a, a pic out there somewhere on the internet and it shows up in Google searches, eh, people can use it. Plain, plain and simple. Uh, I don't want to get into it more than that. It's, it's, I have, again, thousand, the, the flyers community has used thousands and thousands and thousands of pictures and nobody's, nobody's gotten any trouble as far as I know. This one's called, oh, as far as the Whidbey thing, uh, yeah, there's lots of stuff that happens in the Seattle area. As you know, there's people up here from, I mean, D Marbles up here and Paul on the Plains up here and, and other people. And uh, we've had a number of, of flat earth meetups in the Seattle area. As a matter of fact, what was the last one? Lake Stevens, Muckleteo. I mean, those are on the north end, real close to the island. So hopefully, and I told her, I said, look, just keep your eyes peeled and we'll get you something pretty soon. This one's called Supreme Conscious equals Holographic World, Not a Trap. Mark, I am not surprised that people in the 21st century relate everything in their world <clears throat> excuse me, to heavily cyber-influenced terms. Well, the fact that you use cyber worries me. I have always believed that our perception is a concert with greater consciousness. When I realized that the Bible was a quilt of borrowed books, I started looking at other spirituality with a great attraction to Tibetan Buddhism. I recently related to our world being a plane, the lower planes being the abodes of fallen ones and conversely the divine beings inhabiting the upper realms. I believe that base negative expressions are fewer in range and number and so the bad things in our cosmos are limited in comparison to the spiritual growth and the empathy expanding influences. I really appreciate your outlook. You constantly emphasize the dominant positive side of our world. You have expressed a belief that this enclosed world is our classroom. I am inspired by your patience and uplifting attitude. You are a living example of the positive outnumbering the bad. I believe that when people learn to quiet their minds and get in tune with the deep higher conscious, they can tap into the creator aspect of their minds and enhance this holographic world. It isn't a holographic as much it is a system of divine emanations and projections. Our physical bodies are models of this cosmos. Through the use of our physical senses, a psychological being is built and is a reflection of our cosmos. In our minds, we create a model of the universe that is populated with memories of dates and places with relative locations as well as the objects and creatures we have encountered. When a person has an experience, the model updates the catalog to a new reality. We are taught that the system only works one way in this manner. I am certain 
I am certain it is a two-way street. When a person can strongly visualize and convincingly adapt the mental model of the universe, the real world will change in response. It is what the creator wants for his children. We are divine creatures. You just have to learn how to quiet your mind and feel the stillness of our flat, motionless, enclosed plane. They kept it simple. We are the ones that complicated it. The negative is a limiting restraint. The dome is an affirming reminder. We are all one in our reality. We including the creator as well. Warmest regards and immense gratitude for your tireless work, Joe. Thank you, Joe. It is very much appreciated. This one's called Mick Sargent is the new ditto. <laughs> Uh, to all beef interviews, survival guide, let us meet up, pick 12 slides and a five question rebuff. So now freebie requests can be shortened down to McSargent, please. And that's from, uh, Bill Keith. And for millennials, ditto means refers to Rush Limbaugh asking callers to shorten their thanks and praise during on air phone calls to just ditto. Oh no, you see, I, I would never do that. If somebody wants to thank me for something, uh, you know, thank yous come in all sorts of different flavors and styles, and uh, I would never ever say that. Yeah, just, yeah, just shorten it to ditto. Yeah, the millennials. Ugh, guys, you're killing me. Moving on. This one's called Flat Earth Insight. Hi, Mark. I recently watched some of your videos about the flat earth with an open mind and wanted to show you two video links of an ISS tour in space. I don't know what your opinion is with astronauts and satellite in space or the ISS in general, but the links below show two separate astronauts with a video camera that pans over the view of the earth showing a definite curve. Although it doesn't show the entirety of the Earth since it's massive, I can't find any analysis done on both links involving CGI, green screen, fisheye lens, lack of any stars in the background, or anything of the sort. I would love your input on these videos. Uh, let's see, the curvature of the Earth. Yeah, okay, ISS footage. All right, and that's, uh, thank you, and that's pronounced Amon. And I will take a look at that when I get a chance. Although I'm not going to put much faith in it because I have watched tons and tons of space footage. And I hate all of it. This one's called Greetings, Mr. Sergeant. I've been watching and listening to your media for about 13 months now. I would like a copy of the 12 slides and any other fun stuff you would like to send me. Thank you, your friend, Michael. Awesome, Michael. And that's basically, he put everything in the title. I didn't think you could make a title that long. But thank you for that. This one's called Looking in for info on fe conventions mark thank yahweh for you and skiba thompson davidson and so many others all of you are the tools being used as messengers of yahweh showing the way of flat earth has long been the belief of many cultures all over the face of the earth his word will not return without result all of your videos have been had great impact uh, three out of six are fe in my household thanks again a sister in the flat earth Lisa Catlett from Gig Harbor, Washington. Yay, Gig Harbor. Not too far from here, south, in the Puget Sound area. This one's called YouTube Video. Hello, Mark. So the fact that my iPhone connected me to you is disturbing. I am reaching out to you about the flat earth theory. I'm completely divided about it. I see the truth, but I also see the flaws. Thank you, Manjinder. I believe he is Indian. This one's called new phone. Hi, Mark. I lost my phone yesterday. Reloading my contacts on new cell. What is your cell and landline numbers again? Keep up the truly great work, uh, David. And yes, you guys, you guys know my numbers. Uh, my cell phone number is 303-494-6631. And my land number is 720-897-6111. Uh, you can call, you can leave messages on and send text to the cell phone number. I won't text back. And if I call you back, it'll most likely be on the 720-897-6111 because I am up on an island and the cell phone service here is not great, even though I can see Seattle from here and there's major military things around us and major uh, population centers around us. But yet the island, which is only a couple miles away, you know, water, you know, cross water. We have a terrible reception. So anyway, that's probably more information than you needed, but there you have it. This one's called Logan Rejected and Disavowed by Flat Earth Society. 
Hi, Mark. Okay to read on air. Interesting news item. Although we realize the official Flatter Society is a very minor player, this article is getting some press and you may find it interesting. Full video is here. Yep, the Flatter Society. At the time of uh, publishing the statement, the Flatter Society has not been in contact with Logan Paul, and we have no intention of offering him membership or otherwise affiliating with him. Claims that Logan Paul is a member of the Flatter Society, or that he may be considered uh, for membership, is untrue. And yeah, again, you, you've heard me say this before, and that is, you know it's bad when the official Flatter Society, who is not intimately connected with anybody, in uh, in the in the flat earth uh conference circuit uh when they come out against somebody that's that's a bad sign that's that's usually a red flag in fact i'm a little surprised i, I gotta mention this because i haven't talked about eric in a while because you know eric dubay runs the international flat earth research society otherwise known as ifers so he's not commented on logan paul uh, one way or the other i'm i'm a little surprised that he hasn't jumped in and said yeah well you know what? Whatever his opinion is, it's what his opinion is. I'm just a little surprised he hasn't commented either way. Hasn't made a video on it. This one's called Flat Earth and Why It Can't Be a Joke. Dear Mark, just thought I'd send you a rough sketch, which hopefully explains itself. If the Earth was indeed a spinning ball, how does this make any sense? Uh, let me take a quick look at it. It's only about a meg. Yep, the... UK would be in total darkness at 12 p.m. Yeah, it's a little sketch about where the sun should be at given times. And we, we've done experiments on this. Anyway, he says at uh, 12 p.m. midday on July 1st in the UK, it would be daylight. Yes. Then how come it's daylight six months later at 12 p.m. midday when in fact, according to the attached sketch, the UK should be in total darkness, i.e. I, the UK is facing the sun on the 1st of July at midday and would be facing away from the sun six months later on January 1st. Surely this is total proof we are not on a spinning ball. Please let me know your thoughts on this. Many thanks as always. Peace, love, and good health. To all, Bob Jellyman, Eastburn, Eastburn, England, Eastbourne, Eastbourne, England. Uh, P.S. Please feel free to read out and use the sketch. And let's see if there's anything else he said. He, he pasted a couple things in here twice. Uh, sketch. Also, could you email me the Q and A show number you read this on, please? Cheers. Stay flat. Uh, yeah, I will share the sketch with people. I'm not going to share it on the, the Q&A show, but people, we, we've we got people been working on this. In fact, Dee Marble did a wonderful test with, I'm pretty sure there was somebody in England and somebody in the Southern Hemisphere. They were all doing a sunlight tests at the same time. But yeah, if you want me to tell you exactly what show it's on, I will uh, mention it. In this case, it's 104. And thank you for writing in. This one's called Through Behind the Curve. Hello, Mark Sargent. I just watched your movie. And what he's talking about is the uh, Behind the Curve documentary, which you can check out at BehindTheCurveFilm.com, which I did not make. I was just in it. Uh, it was officially made by an L.A. team called Delta V. So uh, really great people down there. Um, he goes <clears throat> on to say, uh, what can I say? It was an amazing team working to make this movie happen we already know what kind of hard work is awaiting for all of us when we sit together to give birth to a movie often we calculate ourselves to suffer martyrdom during the whole process which not infrequently becomes a hell torture ha smiley face great job and congratulations kind wishes nats and fletch and yeah if you're looking to mess with your family this holiday season i highly recommend that you show them behind the curve. You can play it through Amazon, through Google, and through iTunes. It's streaming, and you know you want to have something fun for people to watch after they've had too much uh, eggnog? Throw that on, because remember, it is not a flat earth propaganda movie, and it will, every showing I've been to, every audience I've seen it with, they all have tons of questions, and it is a great thing to plant the seed. So there you go. And I don't make a dime off of it. I wish I did. In fact, that that's probably going to be Murphy's Law happening later, which is this thing will probably do well for them. And I still won't make a dime. This one's called Flat Earth and Chemtrails. Dear Mark, uh, it's Bob from England. I was listening to one of your shows today and suddenly remembered I thought I had quite some time back 
I've been watching the bombardment, absolutely battering really, of chemtrails for many years now and wondering how come they are straight lines as far as the eye can see, with the exception of the planes changing direction, of course. Surely they would show a long, smooth curve, given the latitude to fly at. Surely this is a dead giveaway to anyone doubting Flat Earth. Anyway, keep up the good work, loving your shows even more so now that you're doing Q&A each day to catch up. Take care, my friend. Peace, love, and good health to all. Sincerely, Bob. P.S. What number QA show are you reading this one on? <laughs> Cheers, Bob. You know, I'm going to write him. He's going to figure it out because if he's listening to him every day, he's he's going to figure out it is actually the beginning of number 104. But I put it in my to-do file. That's totally fine. This one's called Mr. Clueless Cavos Didn't Put Flat Earth in the Bible. Uh, Mark, at 1 million subscribers, he needs your thank you for introducing paragraph in the comments. Thanks, Bill. And let me take a quick look at this video. I'm pretty sure I already did it. And oh, yeah, yeah this is one of the bigger YouTube channels out there. It's called Cavos, K-A-V-O-S. He's got a million subs. And he, I, I, know, I know this guy because he uh, covers Logan Paul and Jake Paul, and he covers the other guys, too. And he did one called recently, uh, it was po published on the 22nd, Logan Paul has gone insane with footage and currently has 46,000 thumbs up and 2,000 thumbs down, which is good. It's over 90% and half a million hits. And yes, I put in my paragraph, uh, my, intro, my, my rubber stamp paragraph on just about everything. And let's move on. Let's go to United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs. Mark, have you heard of this department within the UN? Sounds interesting. And you can go to, let's see, it's unoosa.org. Yeah, in fact, let me click on this link real fast here. And it goes to, yeah, I had no idea. This goes to literally a page called United Nations, this is what you could probably type in, United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs. About us, our work, benefits of space, events, space object registrant, uh, documents. Wow. Who knew the United Nations actually had a space thing, a space section? Rules and responsibilities. Uh, United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs is the United Nations office responsible for promoting international cooperation in the peaceful uses of outer space. Uh, it serves as the Secretariat for the General Assembly's only committee dealing exclusively with international cooperation in the peaceful uses of outer space. Uh -huh. Awesome. Thank you for sending that. This one's called Music for Mark Daniel Christ Christofferson, Lake Stevens FE Meetup. Mark, great meeting you at the Lake Stevens Meetup several months back. Here's a song that could work in context of your videos and discussions. He made a song called Open the Door by Daniel. Uh, you could download the video to get audio or I can send you the audio that is high, <clears throat> excuse me, a high quality wave file. Just getting a temporary okay at this point. If you use, please uh, give my name uh, a shout out in text or voice. I have other music, uh, which is stylistically closer to edgy hypnotic electronica. Just say the word and I'll send you more. This is definitely in the vein of Pink Floyd, but it seems to fit the air of mystery that often goes with discussions, suggesting none of this is real. Uh, that's from Daniel. Cool. Thank you. I, I will definitely listen to this. I don't think I downloaded it yet. I get so busy that I don't get to, to look at everything everyone sends me right off the bat, but we will get to it. This one's called Strange World 171. Mark, in your Strange World 171, at time of 12 minutes and 50 seconds, the video stream shows Flat Earth Fact number 97 in white lettering on a black background. Are there at least 96 more? If so, where, I can, where can I find them? Thanks sincerely, Peter. And no, okay, here's the deal with that. Uh, when I reload, you know, you're absolutely right. I have to go back and, you know, I'm going to put this in my things to do pile. When I reload slides, sometimes slides have embedded text uh, in the in the pick, and you have to remove them with your video editor. And there's a remove all section. You can you can remove. There's a little button, a little checkbox in in Windows Live Movie Maker that'll have you get rid of them. Unfortunately, what happens is I, when I update all the slides, when people send me slides, and I get slides all the time. When I, when I throw them all back in there, I have to remember to do that. And sometimes I don't. A lot of people don't actually watch the slides. They just listen to the audio. 
And in this case, this guy was literally just staring at the slides the entire time. I don't know why, but I will thank you for that. And I will go back in and, and, um, pull out those. I thought I had already done that, but maybe not. You know what? Maybe because of my new machine that I got, uh, this alienware thing, maybe I just hadn't done it. Okay. This one's called I confronted Scott Kelly. Hey, Mark, I wanted to give you this video of me confronting Scott Kelly the other day. I'm a big fan of yours. Keep up the good work. That's from Mike Jones. And yeah, Mike Jones has been doing some interesting stuff. He has been, oop, yeah, he pulled it down. Oh, no. Oh, I feel terrible. Okay, so let me let me kind of give you guys a back background of why I'm reacting this way. Uh, his, his, his account's been terminated. Uh, what happened was he, he's been following Scott Kelly around and doing videos of him uh, yelling to Scott, telling him about, asking him about the bubbles in space. And he got such great reception from when he did it at one of Scott Kelly's speaking engagements that he's actually been following Scott to smaller things. And this last one he did was following Scott Kelly to a book signing at a bookstore. It, you know, that's pretty much a captive audience because you're you're right there with Scott at point blank range. And he was just giving him the business to where the bookstore owner asked him to leave. You know, there wasn't any security there. And uh, now I go back and here we are just not even uh, what a couple weeks later. And it says video unavailable. The video is no longer available because the YouTube account associated with this video has been terminated. I got a funny feeling that Scott Kelly, the people that, that manage Scott, because you know, he's retired, right? He's not in NASA anymore. He, um, he, <laughs> they went after him and said for whatever it was stalking, uh, 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 terms of service and, and they took it down. So if you're out there, Mike Jones, uh, love to, um, love to know what happened. In fact, I will, I'm going to email him and say, cause I got, I'm curious myself. And if you guys want to email him, by all means, let me put his email address up here for you. It is K C A A I N V E S T I G A T I V E at gmail.com. So K C A A investigative at gmail.com. And it's awesome. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. Okay, moving on. This one's called No Subject. Uh, Dear Mark, hi, I'm Ronan from Ireland, and I just watched your Flat Earth Part 1, and yes, it did blow my mind, and the more I look into this, the more it makes me really think. Like, the world, I feel, is starting to wake up from the lies been told. It's so social media news, media governments, and so on, embedded into our heads since birth. So, to control us, it is so crazy. Cheers, Ronan. P.S. Keep up the good work. Thank you. This one's called Flat Earther Needs Help. Mark, hello, my name is Andrew. I live in a small town in Tennessee. Why does this sound so familiar? Uh, no, I think I've read this one. Sorry, this was from, um, yeah, this is the guy that was looking for books. And I recommended, he wanted some, yeah, he, he yeah, this that was the guy that said his brother's in jail and they only allow soft cover books. So I recommended uh, Flat Earth Clues and I also sent him the link to Behind the Curve documentary. This one's called, I Just Need to Know. Mark, do you, like so many other flat earthers, believe the moon is a projection or a flat translucent disc? Uh, it's from Shane. And I don't know. Uh, I would like to think the flat earth is a three-dimensional object, but it does not have to be. Uh, remember, the moon on the ceiling of a planetarium is just a two-dimensional projection. And not even that good compared to what you could do with some really, really high-end technology. So could it be 2D? Yeah. Could it be 3D? Yeah. Could it be uh, a combination of both? We don't know. I mean, remember, we're, we're just, we, we haven't even had HD televisions out that long. I think I'm kidding. Look at some of the movies just from less than 20 years ago, and they're not in HD. You know, we're not even, they're not even in ultra wide. Any, uh, yeah. So anyway, that's, that's my short answer for that. I'm supposed to come up with shorter answers now for, um, I'm supposed to practice a few of those because I've got an NPR interview tomorrow and they, they're trying to try to like cover flat earth in less than 20 minutes. And they said, is there any way you could keep your answers under, under like a minute to 30 seconds? And I was like, uh, yeah, I can. Uh, but I don't know how much you're going to get out of it. We'll see. This one's called questions about flat earth. 
Hi, Mark. I just watched maybe even all of the Flat Earth Clues playlist. Thanks for those. They gave me lots to think about. However, I do have some questions that I'm curious. What do you think or what information you found on them? I'm still researching this Flat Earth idea. So there is a good chance the information is out there and I just haven't stumbled upon it yet. So feel free to point me in the right direction on these and any other issues, thoughts that you think would be helpful. Uh, like the number of people in on this secret this big would be a lot. And the more people for any secret, the more likely someone would leak or talk about. How do you explain the fact that no one has blown the whistle? Okay, first off, you don't have to have that many people to know about it. Most of the people can just be wrench turners. They can build everything. I mean, 99% of NASA, they can do their jobs as normal. They build the rockets. They build all the, the parts to the rockets. They sit behind terminals. Only the telemetry guys, which would be very, very few, the data the data guys, the only the people that, that create the data for the other nerds, they would have to be in on it. And even the astronauts, I mean, yeah, they, they know they're faking something, but do they know the whole picture? Probably not. It's called, called compartmentalization. And uh, is the other, the, the second part of that question, how do you explain the fact that no one's blown the whistle? Okay, let's say you are, we'll say Scott Kelly. Let's say Scott Kelly, he's old enough, probably intelligent enough to, to know what's going on. Let's say you all of a sudden have a crisis of conscience and uh, who knows, maybe your child or your wife just comes to you. It's like, yeah, daddy, oh, you know, is it wrong to lie? Whatever it is, right? It's something that, that, that sticks in his head. He has that Jerry Maguire moment. Who exactly he's, is he going to go to at that point? Because remember, he's a colonel in the United States military, a colonel in the U.S. Air Force to be more specific. So who, who exactly is he going to call? What news agency? Remember, the news agencies are all tied in together, and if he's an ex-astronaut, all his emails are going to be monitored, his phone calls are going to be monitored. He's like, no, they wouldn't do that. Yeah, of course they would. He's a colonel in the United States military. There's certain protocols here. You track, and, and once you reach a certain rank, you are tracked, <laughs> and that just in case, because you become valuable now to the other side. And they want to know who you're talking to. And they want to know, so in case you go missing, either voluntarily or involuntarily, they want to know, you know what the, who the most likely suspect is. Is it the other side or is it you or is it both? So who are you going to call? Who, who, what news agency are you going to go to? Are you going to call up the front desk at CNN? Are you going to call your local? Well, you can't go local because that's that's never going to work because they have to put, put up the chain of command. The That's going to be monitored. It's going to be shut down in two seconds. Uh, I use the line. I'll use a line from a movie, which I, I love so much. It was a, a great late 70s movie called uh, Three Days of the Condor with Robert Redford, where he played a CIA analyst who read books and for the CIA and he and his team in the in this little group read something that they weren't supposed to and they decoded something a message that was from another CIA team that wasn't supposed to be public knowledge and so the you know this happens that CIA team was wiped out they sent in a, a, a hit team and wiped everybody out now he was at lunch at the time and by the time he got back he figured out what was going on and he ran and that for three days and and couldn't you know was trying to dodge his own CIA group it wasn't like the, the Russians or the Chinese or anything it was it was inter office it was CIA versus CIA and it wasn't even that sinister uh, and so he decided it was about destabilizing the Middle East, which was really weird for a movie they were talking about in the late 70s. And he, he took his story to the New York Times and one of his, uh, his higher-ups in the CIA, it was the very end of the movie, he says, uh, he goes, yeah, but how do you know they're going to they're gonna run the story? And, and Robert Redford is like, what are you talking about? He goes, he goes of course they're going to run it. He goes, yeah, how do you know they're going to run it? That's true, if, because if you want to do um, intel true intelligence, you're going to have operatives in just about every major news media outfit. And that's you know CNN and Fox and NBC and ABC, all the major networks, uh, and and what used to be newspapers. Now, not as much. You know, New York Times is one of the last newspapers that are out there because it's just too slow. Nobody cares anymore. The point is, is like th this, sorry, this long thing is about the whistleblowers, which is if let's say, again, I challenge this to anybody that's out there. You can write me on this if you want to respond, which is if you were an astronaut or somebody in a space program and you wanted to blow the whistle, tell me who you would go to that would guarantee that your story would get out and would not get suppressed and then you would be eliminated.
because that's the big fear. You got one shot, one shot only. Are they get, can they discredit you? Can they get to you first? Can they can they make you go missing? Or can they just squash the story and say it was a fraud? There's so many different ways you could do this. That's what stops whistleblowers. It, it's not it's not a guarantee anymore. It's not like the old days. It, it's now all the media is bought and paid for. Period. End up. Uh, this one's called how does I'm sorry it's not called anything it's the same freaking email. Uh, second question: How does in-flight internet work for the planes that go over the ocean? The ones they don't track. I have no idea what what they're using for broadband for for the planes. Uh, is it satellite based? I highly highly doubt it. I think it's ground based uh, through towers. I do uh, just because the there isn't enough. I talked to I've talked to too many people in the satellite industry that say they're the 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 actual satellites just don't have the ability to crank out that much bandwidth. They don't. Uh, and this one's the third one is how do you explain the fact that people can see the ISS with naked eye monoculars? It also appears from a quick search that some satellites are also visible and or tracked by people. Is there something flying up there that looks like the IS, ISS? Sure. Do I know what it is? No. Could it be military aircraft? Yes. Could it be some other type of aircraft that we don't know about? Yes. Could it be something suspended uh, like part of the NASA high altitude balloon projects? Yes. Also possible. Uh, are there people living up there? No. No, 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 no. Not, not a chance. And we know this because of the production value that is being used inside the ISS. It's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. And if you're new to this, you're hearing this for the first time, just type in ISS hairspray. Or go to Mike Helmick's channel and look at the, the CGI blunders that have happened over the last 5-10 years. Uh, the email ends like this. Again, thanks for the videos and thanks for your time reading and responding to my email. Thanks, Jet. This one's called Next Flat Earth Step. Dear Mark, Thank you for spearheading the Flat Earth Revival. I have been steeped in the information for three months now. <clears throat> and I'm chomping at the bit to contribute whenever I can. I was awarded a U.S. patent for an astrophysics tech invention. The patent was awarded several years ago, and I've almost sold the invention uh, or secured capital for a startup a dozen times. To me and a few people who know the project, it's been incomprehensible how a deal hasn't been consummated yet. I've always thought the invention was a result of divine revelation to me, but I've discovered now it was preparation for flat earth reality. Three months ago, I realized that God had prevented any transaction with the invention because it was based on the heliocentrism spheroidal earth fallacy. Your hiding God clue is the very heart of the matter. The heliocentrism earth concept instigates a spiritual agoraphobia like where are we major tom where is god's throne if the earth is his footstool and the third heaven which paul the apostle mentions where is that if the third heaven were spatially beyond the border of the universe continuously expanding haha uh -huh, that spiritual distance induces us to feel left out in the spiritual cold and to wonder if god even exists also flat earth reality accommodates the transformation of old heaven and earth to the new heaven and new earth eon prophesied in Isaiah 65 and Revelations 21. Sorry, Revelation 21. That's a common mistake. Most, a lot of people say because there's a lot of revelations, but officially the book is called Revelation. And I know if you're a hardcore Bible person, you're saying, duh, I already knew that. I forgot some years ago. This transformation involves the Lord removing the cherub, cherubim with turning flaming broadswords which i infer refers to the firmament including the antarctic ice wall ring so that the tree of life will be available to the new heaven and new earth inhabitants whereas at present the tree of life lives outside the hemisphere of earth's atmosphere including beyond the antarctic ice wall ring here i'm just sharing my current understanding of this my clearest influence is that the van allen belts is nasa's euphemism for the rakia expanse firmament nasa says it's spatially like this earth the van allen belts moon firmament they don't admit that it's a firmament as you know but there are many attempts to penetrate it with their nuclear war-headed rockets invinces their knowledge of it <coughs> this guy's got a heck of a vocabulary fe is really fe reality is really is the opposite earth moon firmament 
this raises the question for me, how far out from the ice ring does the firmament intersect the earth? That's a good question. It's gotta be thousands of miles. And does God count the plane beyond the ice ring as part of the earth? Ooh, that's a good question too. If not, then it may have been part of the Garden of Eden. Hmm, like that. At any rate, these are my flat earth intimations currently. I've sent you links to two audio files on my Dropbox site of an interview with John Lear, who exposes the Apollo moon hoaxes. Also, he and the interviewer discuss the massive rocket blast at the firmament with the interviewer having had firsthand experience with it. I listened to this several years ago, and while I've always known the moon trips were lies, how sublime to connect the interview segment and the rockets and the firmament to my present FE exploration and discovery. Of the two audio files, these topics start being discussed at the following amounts of time into the files. Number one, at 24 minutes, 30 seconds, that's the moon. And number two, 36 minutes flat, uh, rockets in the firmament. Lastly, I sent you what I hope is the final version of a short article. It's about the prophecy and fulfillment, including the transformation of old heaven and earth into the new heaven and new earth eon, which dovetails perfectly with flat earth reality. If this is revelation knowledge, it was also prophetic by several months to my FE initiation. I respect that you are infinitely busy. And again, I'm enormously grateful for your interfacing with me on this. And I hope much more to come. May the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you. That's from Alan. And you know what? I will grab these things and I will put that into my to-do to -do box. Pretty big to-do pile today. This one's called Kurt from Canada. It, annual email. And... Hey, Mark, I wrote you last October. I was so impressed. You read it on air about a month later. My wife and I are building an off-grid Earth ship. Doubt if you remember. Anyway, I so wanted to call last Tuesday, but got tied up. First of all, your opener at the Flat Earth Canada conference was unparalleled. Brought a tear to my eye. Can't wait to tune in next week. So trying to figure out the mystery celeb, I've narrowed it down a bit more. If he's white, it will be a conservative. And they are few and far in Hollywood. Cuts out Will Smith. Good chance it could be one of the black musician actors out there. I'm betting on your other guests. Mark Wahlberg. He's a tough son of a bitch. Doesn't give a crap about what people think. Done TV production into all sorts of business interests. He said in several interviews that he wants to retire from movies when he's 40 to do the family thing. He's 45 now. Maybe he sees the potential and has something in mind. Anyway, have fun in Denver. I rarely miss your show. So one of these days, look for that BC Canuckian prefix of 250. Maybe we'll have a chat one day, you young whippersnapper. <laughs> P.S. Quote for the day. Uh, if at first you don't succeed, keep on sucking until you do succeed. And that's from Curly Howard. Oh, wow. Cheers, Mark. Kurt. Uh, and there's a pic of our flat earth ship. Let me take a quick look at that. Yep. Flat earth ship. All right. Pretty cool, man. Thanks, Kurt. This one's called Flat Earth Theory. Hi, Mark. I've been following your channel for quite some time now, and I am shocked by some of your facts. Could you send me some strong evidence that proves the earth is flat? Looking forward to your reply. Thanks, Japneet. And yes, I sent him the flat earth shortlist for new people. It, does it absolutely prove there's a flat earth? No. But again, I treat it like a court case. If, uh, if, if this argument was a court case, uh, could I prove the flat earth without a shadow of the doubt? No. But I can create so much reasonable doubt in the globe that you have nowhere else to turn but back towards some sort of flat earth. You're definitely not going back to the globe. Find me somebody that, that's gotten into flat earth and says, no, no, the globe model works better. No, the globe model is so much more complicated, which again, which is why this is resonating so well, because we've come up as a group collective, we've come up with a flat earth model, which is easier to explain than the globe. And people are suckers, not only for the truth, but they also follow the easiest path, almost always. If they have any doubt of that, why do 90% of people text? And not pick up the phone because texting technically is easier. It's less emotionally. I don't think it's easier at all. I, you know, I, I've got big thumbs. I'm not going to even think about doing stuff like that. Plus, you lose so much stuff in in translation. There's a reason why emoticons were created, and that's because there, there's not enough uh, in text to convey your emotions unless you're super uh, articulate in uh, in typing. 
Okay, this one's called Flat Earther in Iowa for Brittany. Flat Earther in Iowa for Brittany. That's all it says. Sorry, I, I don't know what that means. This one's called Dear Mark Sargent. Hello, Mark. Please, would you debate me regarding flat versus globe Earth? My Google Hangout is totaltruther at gmail.com. I'm in England. Thank you, Sam Hancock. Uh, I don't debate just anyone anymore. You gotta, you gotta, I mean, I appreciate you use your real name. At least that's something. Most people that want to debate me don't even do that. I had a German scientist uh, who said that he would love to debate me. And I said, great, fantastic. I'll need your real name and your credentials so that, you know, I can prove who you are. And he's like, why does that matter? I was going, well, it matters a whole, a great deal. I don't know who you are. It's like, why well, I said I am a scientist. Like, well, you can say that you're the, the king of Uganda. It doesn't make it so. You're, I'm putting myself out there. You have to put yourself out there. And most of the time now, I mean, now I, I just don't debate just anyone. I mean, do I do that too many times in interviews and in emails and other things. Uh, you want to debate me publicly, you've got to actually have some sort of degree in something, a physical science, anything. I don't care what it is. Geology, hydrology, biology, archaeology. Take a pick. Something. Anything. This one is called Chicago Weatherman. Tom Coombs told me that Neil deGrasse Tyson is wrong. Boy, this is a big, super big email. Uh, it was an email that he sent to, we sent this to uh, several people. It's from Kurt Moore. And he's talking about, uh, there's a lot of, it's a back and forth email between himself and Tom the um, Chicago weatherman. Sorry, I, I can't read it. It's just, it's just massive. Thing must be six pages long. But thank you for sending. Uh, I, I appreciate. It. And don't, don't think that I won't read it. I mean, I will scan it. Uh, but if you, if you're sending me a correspondence between you and somebody else, uh, I probably won't read it on the show. This one's called Watch Flat Earth Proof News Planisphere patent the real poisoning system not gps on youtube hi mark i just want to share this video with you in case you did not come about uh, come upon it very interesting see you in denver alma thank you for that alma this one's called my guesses for the surprise celebrity guest from suzanne in south korea hi mark i've been racking my brain trying to think who the surprise celebrity celebrity guest could be here are three people whom I didn't hear you mention that it could be, maybe, since you said that they have been in both music and movies. Eminem, yep, I thought of him. Justin Timberlake, you thought of him. Ice-T, yep, I thought of him. Uh, however, I would like to think Mark Wahlberg is another possibility, and that would be awesome. I'm excited about this. I wish I were... Uh, it were at the time of year where I could go. I, it's going to be an amazing time and experience for everyone. Safe travels. I'll be listening silently from across the plane. Best always, Suzanne. Thank you, Suzanne. This one's called Rockwell Polar Flight from November 14th through the 17th, 1965. Mark, check out this flight. Uh, they claim to have circumnavigated the globe north to south. Any thoughts? Loving the flat earth. Can't make it to Denver, but we'll be watching the live stream. Keep it flat. Steve Minnis. And I will look into the Rockwell Polar Flight. I don't think it was a public flight. It sounds like a military flight. Uh, but or military contractor flights, but and also how, how exactly did they navigate in 1965 north to south? Curious about that. This one's called No Subject. Hi, Mark. I would have come to the conference in Denver, but had to cancel. I have a suggestion that Flat Earth supporters should start their own inf information offices in as many cities as possible. Uh, Got it. Uh, keep giving information with brochures and giving addresses to internet where to find interesting reading. I wish you all the best. Jari Lija from Malta. Thank you for that. This one's called Mountains of Water. Hi, Mark. Flat Earth convert for the past year now. Very slowly making the rest of my family of four kids an aside. Question the ball. I started with my kids literally teasing me and my wife ignoring the conversation, but now when I just point to some of your clues at the appropriate time, they do wonder. I found that in that I found that not mentioning flat earth helps and rather just stick to questing, questioning the ball is better. I also found uh, the Antarctic issue hard for people to grasp because no one lives there and we have to accept way too much from both sides of the argument on good faith. Yeah, it's true. 
find me somebody that, that lived in Antarctica. Very few people out there. So my reasoning for questioning would be to try to avoid the Antarctica talk altogether and see what the closest recorded east-west navigation of the globe to Antarctica there is, or is this the same issue of flights from Australia where I am to Chile that don't exist? Yeah, very similar. Uh, my other question, seen many videos and read many discussions and thought all topics have been discussed or covered to help dis disprove water on the globe and gravity. Has anybody asked why we don't have mountains of water in the ocean and lakes? Um, the, the lakes, not as much because, you know, why not in lakes? Why, why aren't there bulges in lakes? Uh, but definitely in the oceans. Remember, it, if, if water is affected by gravity and centrifugal force so easily, then why don't we have this massive, uh, loss of coastline around the equator? Because if, if, you, if you do have this big hump of water in the center, it's not just going to stop when it gets to the beach. It's going gonna, it's gonna to go inland and raw, as well. And you're going to have this massive hump of water uh, cutting, cutting in big swaths through Africa and South America. Uh, let's see here. If gravity doesn't hold me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What if gravity holds water to the globe? Why doesn't it hold it evenly across the globe? following the contour of the ocean floor, therefore showing mountains and valleys of water across the ocean. If gravity is strong enough to hold water to the ball, then why, then it can't pick and choose exactly how it acts on each individual water molecule as it moves across different depths, pulling some to the ocean floor and others to even surface. Has anyone seen this argument discussed anywhere online? That's from Reniz, R-A-N-N-I-Z. Yeah, yeah, we talked about it. It's, it's a good argument. It's only one of many that's out there. That just blows holes in science. This one's called Hey Bro, see you in Denver. Chris Smiley, watch Behind the Curve Flat Earth documentary film review and New York City premiere Q&A on YouTube. And yes, I did have a chance to see Chris Smiley. Funny enough, uh, he drove myself and Patricia Steer out to the billboard. We just ran into him outside. Uh, David Weiss did a great job of getting everybody carpooled. And we all climbed in this big caravan of cars and we drove out to the billboard and it was awesome. It was a beautiful day, not a cloud, nothing in the sky. It was just blue skies all the way around, a beautiful uh, sunny day in Denver. And we all were around the billboard. I'm sure you've seen footage of it. And Chris Smiley, it was, it was also great to see him because just before that, he was in New York City at the uh, New York City Documentary Film Festival and watched Behind the Curve with uh, Zulu One and uh, CC and uh, the director was there and the producers and the editor and, and uh, it was it was great and I'm, I'm glad he got a chance to see it. This one is called Less Motion. Mark, sounds best with decent headphones, 47 seconds long. Less Motion. Oh yeah, yeah. Somebody sent me the, uh, I'm sorry, that's from Brendan Briggs. It's a great little sound clip. Uh, where it was a uh, an old timey announcer that was talking about how the Earth we used to think the Earth was flat, and he set it to music. It was pretty cute. I'm thinking of using it as a, as a trailer for something. I just haven't figured out what what, what I'm going to fit it into yet. This one's called Inverted AE Map Challenge. Hi, Mark. I'd first off like to thank you and the respectable Flat Earth community for all the information that has shaped my thought process. I continue to research the Flat Earth topic on a regular basis as I fall into sites of arrogant, self-righteous individuals who are clearly of this heliocentric mindset. I find myself irritated about the way they attack the concept of Flat Earth, more specifically the AE map. I took some time to look into an idea this evening as a random thought went through my mind. I looked for a map that would be a southern pole projection or inverted AE. What I have found so far is disappointing. Nothing is represented well north of the equator. The challenge topic to a heliocentric individual would be, can they reference a southern pr projection map, one that is scientifically proven to be correct as is, that can be act that can accurately represent the whole earth and be navigated uh navigate able <laughs> wow as the ae map is and was for centuries as absurd as some of their arguments are to the community responding to them in this style of challenge would be at the very least amusing i've noticed that rob skiba has some concerns with the ae map lately maybe you can bring him and the rest of the community in on this if this has been covered please steer me to the video Thanks again for all the effort you have put into this topic. And that's from Bill. Thank you, Bill. And yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at this. Everyone knows the AE map is a great starting point. 
Uh, but after that, you've got to get into some advanced maps and everybody's got their own favorite. Because we don't know all the details to the map. We don't. All we know is the AE map is being pushed by mainstream, which is interesting. And not even really pushed. It's just out there, kind of like it's hiding in plain sight. So is there is there another dimension to this that we don't know? There are there's certain aspects of this map that we haven't figured out yet, possibly. This one's called Experiment. It was sent to myself and Jaron and a couple others. Hello all, there needs to be an experiment done with two drones hovering at the same height over a certain distance to see if the other drone drops below the curve so we can see if the Earth is flat or globe. Best regards from Croatia, Criso. And I think he sent this to us before. It sounds awfully familiar, only there was less text in this one. <clears throat> Excuse me. This one's called No Subject. Mark, I almost thought I was losing my mind. I may not know much yet, but I do know one thing that certain coincidences don't exist. Everything happens for a reason. I feel I must express my admiration for your work. Impeccably astonishing. Oh, that's awfully nice. And that's from a woman who refers to remain anonymous, who goes as by air. So thank you for that. And you know what? I will write her back and say thank you this one's called your minecraft account has been migrated <laughs> hi blank we've just migrated your minecraft account into a mojang account if you requested this well done you don't need to do anything else however if you didn't request this change there may be issues with the security of your account we recommend you get in contact with mojang support at blah 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 thanks your friends at mojang and yeah, you know, you know, your game's big when they are spamming uh, millions of people to see if you can get your they can get your Minecraft account. Because apparently, I don't know, can you sell a Minecraft account? It can't be that worth that much, right? Weird. But yeah, the point is, I don't have a Minecraft account, nor do I have bank accounts at just about every bank that you could ever think of. This one's called Neil deGrasse with Jim Norton. Mark, check this out. Neil was on Jim Norton's show during the first 10, 15 minutes. He's literally parroting flat earth talking points. Fish eye lenses, faking curve by NASA. This is wild. And that's from Virgil uh, in Traveler's Rest, South Carolina. Yep, I will check that out. This one's called Flat Earth Believers. Please read. Mark, hi, I'm Molly, and I always believed the earth was round until I heard someone talk about it who wasn't saying how stupid it was it was like it all made sense in that moment but i really want to learn more it's really hard because when i look it all up i see flat earth theory debunked or why it's stupid and it makes me even more curious is there any youtube channels you can direct me to yes there is i'm going to send her to the flatter shortlist for new people and yeah, she's absolutely right. In fact, as of this morning, uh, if you didn't already notice, if you type in Flat Earth in YouTube, they've changed the uh, the pecking order. So the top 10 used to be the same for months and months, and I don't think it's a coincidence, is that right after the NASA landing, the new ro rover landing on Mars, uh, the the first, I think the top five are all space, space heavy. So it'd be Neil deGrasse Tyson and people that are trying to debunk it. Uh, and not the CBS piece and not the ABC piece. Those have, those have been bumped down to below the top 10. Will they change it? We'll see. I mean, every once in a while, it's weird. Like I saw the, uh, uh, not the Comedy Central thing, the Daily Show. Well, the Daily Show on Comedy Central where Lewis Black was, was making fun of Flat Earth. And that was up at the top and got 700,000 hits and was heading towards a million. And then it drops down. So with some channels... I think they, I think there are bigger channels that are allowed to to go to be bumped up, and then they settle down. But we've been lucky so far that uh, some of the neutral pieces uh, have been up at the top for so long, and we'll see. We'll see if they go back up. This one's called questions. Mark, I have some questions about flat Earth. Maybe you could answer them. That's from Elizabeth. Uh, yeah. Um, what, what questions you got? I'll, maybe I'll write her back and say what questions. This one's called saw you read emails on your YouTube and wanted to see what you thought about this. Mark, okay, here's a test. Take a gun and a target and place the target one mile away. Now either set the gun up or get someone who shoots professionally, then have them make the calculations that include the curve of the earth, then have them do the calculations without the curve included at one mile 
they have to make calculations about speed, wind, etc. The shot fired that involves the curve of the earth will hit the target, assuming it is also aimed or it might be shot by someone who can hit at that range consistently. The second shot will not hit if the earth is really round. What do you think? And what's your evidence to back up <laughs> what you believe will happen? Uh, this is a test that I wouldn't even have to do because we've had professionals from all branches of the military. In fact, let me rattle them off to you real fast. And that is a uh, United States Navy missile instructor. I won't, I'll just do the military guys. The Air Force navigator, the Marine Corps sniper instructor, the Navy submarine chief, the artillery, artillery radar operator, uh, the U.S. Army master gunner, uh, the electronic warfare technician. Uh, they all say the same thing which is that they're firing weapon systems far, far longer than one mile. And uh, I don't care if you're using a 50 cal or whatever, um, a howitzer fires much, much further, 30 miles or so. A tank fires much, much further. And same thing with the, the Sparrow missile system. That was one of the first subject matter experts we had. And they all say the same thing, which is we do not take the curvature of the earth in calculations for the firing solution, nor do we take the spinning of the earth in uh regards to the firing solution it just doesn't happen so if those guys they, they've all said the same thing they said just does not it does not come into play here so why why would we even do another shot if you want to do a shot with a one mile thing that's fine but i i will lean on the subject matter experts to date none of them have come back to re, uh, refute their own testimony to, i'm sorry uh recant their own testimony and nobody's come out against them I, which is really strange to me i always thought there would be someone from the united states military that would be pro-globe that would come out and say oh yeah this guy's obviously wrong never happened so there you go uh with that we will call it good and uh, thank you for everybody that wrote in so far and everybody that's going to write into the future. And uh, remember, you can email stuff to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. Until next time, guys, stay flat. <laughs>